Welcome everyone, it's Matmus. Thank you so much for joining me today on this video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So today's video, we're going to be discussing the Challenger 2 main battle tank, and in particular, its potential upgrades and future service within the British Army. Now, this tank has a very close, sentimental connection to myself. I've worked alongside it in my British Army career, and hands down, obviously, it is going to be my favourite main battle tank out there on the market. Um, this vehicle is highly impressive. If you don't know much about it, please feel free to check out some information um, in the links below. I've put some descriptions from both uh, defence websites and all sorts of different background information on this particular vehicle. And we're not really going to go over the overview of this vehicle today. We're actually going to talk about its future service and the kind of upgrades that this vehicle is looking into getting in the long term. Because this tank has been out for quite some time. Um, and some of its systems are starting to become highly outdated compared to some of the other modern, modern main battle tanks that are on the market today. So we're just going to discuss kind of the various different options that are available and the companies that are actually interested in helping up improve and upgrade this vehicle to modern day standards. So the Challenger 2, pretty much it's served very faithfully in the British Army for about 18 years now in both wars and conflicts around the world. But now the Challenger 2 battle tank is to have its lifespan extended to 2035 with a major technology upgrade. BAE Systems, which built the tank when it's still known as Vickers Defense Systems, has proposed adding new thermal imaging, targeting and weapon control systems. It will also be given a new high-tech electronics control and display system to bring the 68 ton main battle tank into the 21st century. The UK's Ministry of Defence chose to upgrade Challenger 2 after deciding it would be too expensive to purchase a new battle tank. Now, this is pretty, uh, you know, obvious, guys, to be honest. The Challenger 2 was a high investment. It's a, a tank that they wanted to last for quite some time. And the UK, inclusive of many other governments around the world, are looking to cut the pennies in terms of defence spending, which is unfortunately a sad fact, but it's what's going to happen. And this is how it's going nowadays. Upgrade packages are the way forward. The countries that have, you know, defense spending cut so tight that they can't afford to procure new weapon systems are going into now upgrading vehicles. And we've already seen this in some of my previous videos in the past. You know, simple little armor upgrades, new weapon systems, targeting systems that can be easily upgraded without having to design an completely new platform and vehicle, which can be quite difficult. I mean, you've got to think about the amount of design, uh, technology, you know, the manpower, the effort, the money that it takes to procure and design a new battle tank. And uh, upgrading a vehicle like this that is also very well known and well renowned and doing its job um, is going to be a lot simpler of an option for the British government. Now Russia has recently unveiled its T-14 Armata main battle tank, which let's be honest is quite an impressive main battle tank. It's stepped aside from the world of, you know, four-man crew uh, filling up the turret with troops. Uh, got into a compartmentalized section of the tank and actually more better protection and so on and so forth. This, this video isn't really about that tank. I'm more focusing on the T-14 being more of a threat to the Challenger 2. And potentially the UK and the Ministry of Defense have decided to upgrade their tanks to keep up with this modern day threat. Because um, the T-14 could potentially be a showstopper for the Challenger 2 if um, it came to it. I mean, we can't really say what's better than what's not. It, this is, again, not one of those videos. But the T-14 Armata is definitely a tank that is potentially to be reckoned with. And Challenger 2 needs to be able to keep up with that strategic threat. And it is a strategic threat, guys. I mean, um, Russia's flexing its muscles. The United States is flexing its muscles. Everybody is. And it's kind of getting a little tense out there right now. And uh, especially in terms of strategic warfare and conventional warfare, tanks are starting to come back into the limelight a little bit uh, in terms of being on the battlefield uh, and its dominance on the battlefield. So with the T-14 coming out, I think the MOD and the UK are kind of thinking, oh, we need to start going back to our roots and start trying to get these tanks upgraded and ready for potential potential engagement of tank on tank warfare and it's interesting to see that uh, they're actually getting back into that plate because during my time in the British Army they were stepping away from tanks they really had very little interest in it because Afghanistan was our focus we were focused on you know insurgent warfare uh, trying to take on guerrilla combatants it was just not a good time for tank uh, warfare at its time and practice and training and upgrades so the T-14, I think, has definitely got the UK to kind of think about where they're going ahead with the next stage for Challenger 2's future. So the MOD is actually proposing um, bids for defence companies for about a £700 million upgrade. So that's a lot of money, guys. So they're obviously keen on getting this going. 
BAE Systems has proposed upgrading the tank's thermal imaging systems and giving it the ability to pick out targets during both day and night a lot more effectively. Now the Challenger 2 already has these kind of systems but they are quite dated and I guess this upgrade is trying, trying its best to address the problem of these systems probably aren't as clear and as the best clarity as some of the other modern day systems that are on tanks nowadays and that really needs to be address addressed because these tanks need to be able to be engaging targets at night and day without any obscurity to the gunner. He needs to be able to pick out targets correctly and focus good. And obviously the older system just isn't cutting the mustard. The commander's primary sight will integrate this thermal imaging system to give that 24 hour hunter killer capability. The gun control and fire control systems will also be upgraded to improve the accuracy of the weapons. The companies also want to completely overhaul the internal electronics and the control systems of all those electronics in the vehicle. It's said that it's hoped to propose a further capability enhancements to the Challenger 2 for the next 10 to 15 years. In 2006, the MOD fitted a single Challenger 2 tank with the new L55 120mm main gun for a trial and found it outperformed the current L30 charm gun currently fitted, which we already know is the rifled gun instead of the smoothbore gun, and it comes with its own various you know, problems, and we'll discuss them in a little second here. But although it has not been announced that the main gun will be changed as part of this upgrade, it is estimated that it will cost about £386 million to fit all operational Challenger 2 tanks with the new weapon system. Again, that's a lot of money in a massive upgrade. Now, the Challenger 2's gun is fundamentally handicapped by its use of two-piece ammunition, which makes it pretty much impossible to adopt new, longer armor-piercing darts putting a hard roof to lethality that is already assessed as problematic and will only get worse over time. In addition, while in the past the Hess round for the L30 added a flexibility that smoothbore tanks did not match, now the situation is fundamentally reversed. There is now a whole variety of ammunition available for smoothbore guns, including the Novel Trime mode, high explosive shell with airburst and anti-structure capability, and the Challenger 2 is completely locked out of this lost in its own little sea of aging shells with their own existing unique logistical tail. To understand the Challenger 2's main gun problem, it is important to underline the heart of the matter is not so much that it's the rifle barrel, but more the fact of because of this two-piece ammunition. The unique feature means that the current ammunition storage spaces are far too short to take the long piece, one piece shell that are used by everywhere else in NATO, and it also means that Challenger 2 crews can store the explosive rounds and the launch charges beneath the turret ring, where they are generally safer. But in exchange for this, the Challenger 2 does not have the extensively protected and blast venting ammunition storage compartments found, for example, on the M1 Abrams. BAE Systems has now passed through the first stage of the selection process for the upgrade for this tank. And along with BAA Systems, there is the Team Challenger 2, which is made up of seven key players in the defence industry markets. General Dynamics Land Systems UK, General Dynamics Mission Systems International, Leonardo Finamicana, Moog, Quineta Q, and Saffron Electronics. The next stage will involve a two-year assessment in which the bidders will test their plans they put forward for the developing tank. Two bidders are expected to be selected by the end of that year and hopefully the tank will get rolling into its upgrade package very, very quickly. Since the tank came into service in 1998, the company has continued to support the vehicle to ensure it's always been ready for action. BA Systems has provided emergency operations and upgrades to respond to emerging threats and changing battle scenarios for this tank. But in order for the tank to continue its operations to 2035, the MOD announced that last year several key systems will have to be replaced. So here's just some of the features that have been proposed for the update for the Challenger 2 Life Extension program. As mentioned before, a new thermal imaging system. This provides day and night surveillance and better target engagement. The company BAE now have the opportunity to provide an up-to-date system that will deliver improved 24-hour performance. As I mentioned before, it's highly, highly important this tank is able to engage targets in any kind of weather condition or lighting condition. And with this kind of upgrade, it's obviously going to bring it up to the standard of which most modern battle tanks now are upgrading to themselves. Second point is the commander's primary sight. The current sight gives the commander 360 degree independent surveillance, electronically handing over targets to the gunner and looking for new targets. The newer system will include thermal imaging and give the commander a full 24 hour day and night hunt killer capability, delivering greater situational awareness and flexibility. Again, there's no point having a commander's sight to be able to give that 360 degree view if you don't have good clarity onto targets and being able to find targets for your gunner. So this is obviously a really, really important upgrade for this vehicle. 
The next is the gun control equipment, and obviously the key and most integral part of actually engaging a target is being able to put a round on target first time. First shot, first kill. This subsystem moves the turret and the gun under direction from the fire control system, ensuring timely and accurate fire. The BAE company will provide future proof and subsystem up to date technology for this particular system. Again, this is really, really important. There's no point in having that powerful gun and all this firepower ready to go if we can't get that round on target. And bringing a system like this up to you know, modern day standards for me is a no brainer. It should have been done a long, long time ago in my own personal opinion. The fact that these upgrades are coming in so late and have yet to be fully implemented is beyond me. But as I mentioned before, it is because mainly that we just haven't been focusing on armored warfare for quite some time. We've been stuck in Afghanistan and such, and we've just been kind of focusing a little bit more on the infantry side and a little less on the armored side. Okay, so the next point is gonna be its electronic architecture. This basically connects the vehicle subsystems. Once upgraded, it will allow the new commander's crew station to be installed and give the vehicle an expandable architecture hosting new interfaces, reconfigurable displays and controls. So basically, this is kind of like a battle computer. It's allowing us to connect to GPS, uh, use satellite imagery, view what other vehicles are seeing, all that sort of stuff. Very, very clever stuff. And in fact, uh, I've seen some of these systems being utilized and implemented on some of the vehicles when I was just leaving the British Army. Very, very clever stuff. Um, being able to view what someone else is looking through their site uh, is very, very handy to have. And obviously the Challenger 2 is gonna benefit from that substantially. And it's something, again, I'm just shocked that has not been brought in a long time ago. And finally, a new fire control system. Now, this acts as the brain of the weapon system, or i.e. the main gun, uh, orchestrating the sighting, gun control, and sensor subsystems, and this will provide a more accurate and dynamic weapon aiming type. The company will try and modernize and future-proof this system. So the fire control system is basically going to be our, you know, gun stabilization equipment, uh, battle, sorry, not battle computer, ballistics computer, that is allowing us to actually, again, put around on target, stabilizing that gun, uh, you know, adjusting for lead, uh, dynamic lead, all that good stuff. So really, really important, very important system that needs to be upgraded. And again, I'm just shocked that we are still to this day only just realizing that these systems need upgrading. And like I said, it's clearly for the fact that things are going back to what they used to be in terms of, you know, uh, standard conflict when it comes to tank on tank warfare. And the MOD is kind of woken up to that, which, you know, when I was leaving the British Army, I kind of remember a lot of the crews of Challenger 2s were saying to me, you know, this isn't good. Like, we need to be getting back into the tanks. We need to get training. You never know when it can kick off again. And that's exactly what I guess the MOD's finally realized to do. So these upgrades are obviously really, really important for the tank. And to be honest, I'm really, really happy that the companies are kind of doing a bidding war. It kind of gives them a bit of motivation, a bit of sort of a urge to get the, the program done correctly um, and to make sure that the tank is brought into the modern day you know battle uh, picture because the tank deserves it I mean it's it's served the British Army very very well uh, as I said before it's personally done me fantastically I love it to bits and I'm proud to say that this vehicle is going to come into the next 20 or so years um, and a lot of people saying well where's the Challenger 3 coming out guys it's not going to happen uh, it's not going to happen for a very long time and I can almost guarantee it will not be called the Challenger 3 a uh, couple of reasons for this. First of all, um, they're gonna if they're gonna design a new tank, they are going to design a brand new tank. Therefore, it's not gonna be chassied around the Challenger One, which is what the Challenger Two was. Uh, yes, there's a lot of differences between the two tanks, but really the key integral parts of the chassis design and such are very very similar. So that's why it was called the Challenger Two. It's kind of like a transitional upgrade for the vehicle in terms of a new design, but it really is a the same kind of layout and setup as the original Challenger One. In, for the most part anyway. So there will be no Challenger 3 guys, I can almost guarantee that if in the next 20 or so years they do need to design a new tank, it will not be called that, it'll be something else with a C, um, I have no idea what, <laughs> but it'll be cool to know what eventually they do pick, um, maybe Charger or something, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it is impressive to know that this tank will be continuing to serve for many many years to come, and I honestly think, like I said before, it deserves it, it served the British Army very well, and it deserves to keep rolling um, into the future and being able to be brought into the battle picture for modern, modern day conflict. Um, of course, I don't ever want to see Challenger 2s going into real combat and real conflict, but if push comes to shove and we need to put rounds down range, then I want to make sure that my countrymen and my fellow soldier are protected as best they can and being able to defend the country's inter interests and the military's interests as best as possible. And I honestly think that this upgrade package is going to do so. I mean, as I said before, I'm just absolutely gobsmacked 
that this upgrade hasn't been done a long time ago. I mean, you'd think that, <laughs> you know, they'd realize that Afghanistan's eventually going to end. We never had Challenger 2s in Afghanistan, um, and good thing about it, because I would have lost my mind if they'd have taken them over there. It would have just been a mechanical nightmare. Um, but I honestly really do feel that, um, you know, th this tank is going to do very well for itself with this new upgrade. And it's going to, you know, maybe potentially even be extended further than 2035. You never know. I mean, there's tanks out there that are older than, than the Challenger 2 that are still rolling. I mean, look at some of my M60 videos that I've talked about with uh, certain upgrades. I mean, this tank's been going for a very long time. And, uh, yeah, I just, I'm really happy that this is going to be coming into play. Um, so it'll be interesting to see which exactly um, defense contract is actually going to take up this upgrade. I can almost guarantee it's going to be BAE combined with General Dynamics because, you know, they're the bread and butter of this tank. They know the ins and outs. They know exactly what's going with it. But you never know. Maybe there'll be a fastball contractor that will come in there and give them some better options for an upgrade package, but I can highly doubt that. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like the overview for this tank and its upgrade package coming in. If anyone else would like to leave some comments or what you feel about this particular tank or its upgrades, please, please, please leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear about your facts and opinions and all sorts of different input on this particular tank. Clearly this tank has a strong passion of mine and I love it to bits, so uh, I don't mind if you want to criticize it at all, feel free. I, I understand it's not everybody's cup of tea. There's potentially people who have strong views and opinions on other tanks. Um, but again, this is purely a video just to kind of demonstrate the kind of upgrades that are out there and it's not trying to depict the tank being better than anyone else's, so keep your hair on, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a video to tell you what's going on with this tank in the future. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really do appreciate you watching. Please leave a like um, if you enjoyed it and a comment. Just give me some input on what you thought or, or just, you know, about the upgrade package itself. If you are new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. Hit that uh, like and subscribe button. And uh, I hope to see you in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.